Ah, uh, yes, Terraria. It's like a digital playground where you can do pretty much anything. It's a 2D game filled with adventures, crafting, building, and fighting. You explore various landscapes from lush forests to spooky dungeons, gathering resources and battling monsters along the way. You can build epic structures, dig deep into the ground for treasure, or challenge powerful bosses. With its pixelated charm and endless possibilities, Terraria is a game that keeps you coming back for more. This playthrough started out like any other playthrough. I started out by naming my character Damn Daniel. Um, not really sure why, but it just felt right in the moment. I begun with the creation of my world, calling it day 1 through 100, just because it's very simple. I went on medium and master mode because it's the hardest difficulty, as well as I was a little not sure if I wanted corruption or crimson, but I ended up choosing corruption because I like it better personally. I know, I know, some of you might get mad at me for having the robot vanity, but it's only vanity, it doesn't help me in any way, and it looks very cool, so don't worry about it. Day 1 started out by mining some trees, then bravely venturing to the left, uncovering hidden treasures in these chests. Our exploration then continued to the right, where we found even more mysteries waiting to be discovered. As night fell, we quickly built a sturdy house for safety, and during the night we began the ambitious task of mining a elevator delving deep into the earth. After some time, we were equipped with a new hook, upgraded pickaxe, and an iron bow, as well as handy shoe spikes. Whoa, 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 stop, 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 hold up. Before we get too into this playthrough, we got three challenges we need to do. The first being collecting all the relics from every boss and event there is possible. The second being, I want to make the cell phone to have every single piece of information for my character, ranging from fishing power all the way to what rare creatures are near me. The third being, I will achieve the best gear and accessories possible at the end of the game for Ranger since, well, if it isn't obvious, I'm playing Ranger. Now, we have a secret fourth challenge we might be able to get midway through the playthrough, but it kind of depends on how lucky we get, so stay tuned for that. <clears throat> Back to the 100 days now. On the second day, I ventured leftward, excited to explore new biomes. Armed with basic equipment, I dove straight into the mines, mining for resources and encountering unexpected treasures along the way. Among the rocky depths, I stumbled upon my first life crystal, a precious find that increased my total life. Further exploration yielded even more surprises, as I found Hermes boots and a cloud in a bottle, which are extremely good accessories to have for navigating the world's treacherous terrain, as well as avoiding some mobs. Returning home, I took the opportunity to upgrade my iron bow to a nice shiny gold bow. With my new gear and accessories, I ventured to the left finding the big dungeon in front of me. Continuing my journey to the left on day 3, I encountered the angler for fishing quests and the merchant ended up arriving because I had more housing. Back at home, I expanded my house and purchased a bug net from the merchant. Soon after, the nurse joined our growing community. Venturing into the underground, I completed the fishing quest and welcomed the demolitionist. Back home, I spruced up my house, making it look a lot cleaner. I went back to the mines and stumbled upon a lucky gold coin circle from a pot while mining. I also found water walking boots and another life crystal, making me like Jesus basically, and increasing my max health once more. On day 4 we tried making a surface fishing spot and this thing took all day. It was not big enough and I had to fix it plenty of times. After setting up the fishing spot, finally I was able to get the quest fish. I then ventured down in the underground desert. I mined for fossils and stumbled upon some nice dune rider boots. However, after getting some fossils and loot, then returning home, it quickly ended when I got face to face with an explosive trap down in the underground nearing the end of day 4. As day 5 began, I set out to tackle the fishing quest of course, but my plans were soon ended when I ventured into the corruption and met my demise. Even though I was annoyed, I drank a gravitation potion and went up in the sky hoping to find some sky loot from the sky islands, only to meet a grim fate of a harpy, which sucks. CAN YOU GO AWAY?! After getting even more butthurt, I changed course and headed left, where I finally started fishing and eventually got the quest fish, completing the annoying task. I turned my attention to more practical matters like constructing a desert house to have more room for the increasing population of NPCs. Uh, I then delved into the caves once more. I stumbled upon a life crystal, giving me more health to accommodate for my lack of armor and defense. Uh, as I continued mining my mining expedition, I found a mushroom biome as well as another life crystal to increase my vitality even more. 
feeling more confident with my health. Uh, day six begun, and I continued my mining expedition, looking for anything shiny. However, my progress quickly ended when I came across a dead man chest trap. I uh, guess my greed took the best of me. Oops. Unaffected, back at the surface, I completed another angler quest, getting even closer to the materials for the shell phone before going back into the mines. Among the many tunnels there was and the ones I made, I stumbled upon another life crystal, but the treasures just kept coming, with yet another life crystal and another and another, each one further enhancing my life total so I wouldn't be such a little baby against big scary bosses like uh, the Moon Lord. However, after finding all this, I encountered Tim. That That's it, just Tim. He's uh, had his cool, I guess. I ended up killing him. On the seventh day in Terraria, I started off by doing the angler's bidding and completed the angler's quest. Then started building an arena to prepare for some boss battles and events ahead of time. Afterward, I went mining and discovered the last life crystal that I needed, boosting my health all the way up to 400 HP. Finally though, my luck didn't last too long because while I was mining, I tried to find the extractinator, but I died and was slowly getting annoyed at not even being able to find the extractinator. This, uh nearing the end of our day seven pretty quickly. On the following day, number eight, I tackled the angler's quest like always, but this time I earned the prized golden bug net, an upgrade from the standard bug net. Journeying into the jungle, I found the anklet of wind, enhancing my movement abilities, as well as eventually combining it at a tinkerer's workshop to make some lightning boots. Eventually, I stumbled upon the extractinator, a long saw item I was looking for. Finally, I can start getting the pieces to my desert fossil armor. Yeah, my joy was short-lived as I, I died in the jungle pretty soon after. I then mined desert fossils only to meet my end at the hands of a flying bug thing with wings that is very scary. No. Uh... On the ninth day in Terraria, I kicked it off by using the extractinator to process desert fossils in order to get sturdy fossils for my armor. I didn't get too many sturdy fossils though, so I decided to take on the angler's quest. Spending literally the entire day fishing for the quest fish, I just realized that I needed to fix the area I was fishing in a little bit. <sighs> what a waste of time. Anyways, determined to prove my luck, I created an artificial jungle fishing spot for eventual fishing quests that will happen in the jungle. Later, I headed to the desert, resuming my mining efforts to gather more desert fossils nearing the end of our ninth day. Also finding the golfer, which was uh, pretty random. On our first double digit day, number 10. I continue my mining expedition in the desert, uncovering more fossils and just some boring old mining. Unfortunately, my journey was cut short by a fatal encounter in the underground desert. I guess you uh, could say, sand me somewhere else. Get it? Cause, cause I died and, you know, I, you know what, forget about it. After spawning back in, I crafted a part of the fossil armor and resumed the angler's fishing quest, thinning the fish population one at a time. Back in the desert, I mined even more fossils and bought a DPS meter from the traveling merchant. With the materials gathered, I completed the fossil armor set. Once I was done with that, I moved over to the jungle. I constructed a, dare I say, beautiful house for NPCs and began making a nice storage area for better efficiency and organization skills with all my items. With our 11th day bestowed upon us, I focused on organizing my storage area, arranging chests, and sorting items, which took a decent portion of my day up. Along the way, I bought dynasty wood and shingles from the traveling merchant to add some beauty to my creations and because I love all my NPCs so much. Venturing to the desert, I worked on creating an artificial fishing biome and took on the angler's quest. After completing these tasks, I returned to my storage project, ensuring everything had found its place and making it look a lot nicer and beautiful -er. I spent the 12th day meticulously expanding my storage area, organizing resources with precision, and cleaning it all up. After the storage, I went and did the angler's quest, swiftly completing it and reeling in the catch of the day. We then get to our first boss, the King Slime, engaging in the battle. Overall, it wasn't too difficult, and with all my preparation I have done beforehand, we emerge victorious on my very first attempt. I turned my attention to my arena, extending its reach and adding some necessary requirements like even more campfires and heart lanterns. And at the end of this, we also got our first relic, which is uh, pretty cool. On day 13 in Terraria, I focus on two main tasks, beautifying my surroundings and advancing quests. I spent the morning perfecting my arena's design, ensuring both form and function were considered in this process. After that, I did the angler's quest like always, ensuring that I received my payment and other good loot from him. 
Returning home, I spruced up my forest house, adding a nice roof, as well as fixing some walls up and adding a balcony or two. As the day kept going, I journeyed to the snow biome where I started crafting a comfy cabin snow house, trying to blend it in with the scenery, taking us to the near end of day 13 after that. On day 14, I continued working on my snow house, making it cozier by the minute, and fixing up the little things. Then I headed over to the desert for an angler quest, getting through the harsh desert enemies and annoying sandbox everywhere. Once I got all my loot, I ventured into the jungle, hunting for the boomstick. Sadly, throughout my time in the jungle, I was not able to find the boomstick, but among all the scary enemies and random traps, I stumbled upon the Staff of Regrowth, a pleasant surprise. My confidence is going up, especially with better guns and gear that we've been getting, along with the Staff of Regrowth for the eventual plant farm, so I can have a nice stockpile of potions and buffs waiting for me. On day 15, my day started off by taking me to the ocean for an angler quest, getting the same old quest fish. Once that task was done, I made my way over to the corruption, delving deeper. I shattered some shadow orbs, claiming the musket, and welcoming the arms dealer to my world. Back at home, I began work on a plant farm to boost my potion supply and to utilize those against bosses and other events in the said future. As night fell, I faced my second boss, the Eye of Cthulhu. It was honestly just as easy as the King Slime. Could be argued he was easier. All he had was just some speed to him. Emerging victorious with a fresh treasure bag, granting me a brand new Cthulhu shield. With some of the Demonite ore the Cthulhu dropped, I crafted the Demon Bow and the Axe of Nightmare to increase my damage as well as farming. I ended the day off by just hunting for stars, trying to build up a decent supply of ammo for the star cannon that I will get eventually. And after that battle, we got our second relic. With day 16, my efforts were met with success after success. Utilizing the stars I had collected, I crafted a ton of jester arrows, ready for the upcoming battle with the Eater of Worlds. After getting prepared and receiving the necessary buffs, I faced the Eater of Worlds who surprisingly didn't stand a chance against me with Jester Arrows and the Eater of Worlds was done for, all on my first try. With a chunk of his loot, I forged a portion of the Shadow Armor along with the essential Nightmare Pickaxe. My victory against Eater of Worlds also gave me the Worm Scarf, reducing a ton of damage I would take from any type of mob. Shortly after, I went to do another angler quest like always, getting some quick and easy money. While I was fishing though, I stumbled upon valuable treasures like the Tsunami in a Bottle from a crate, which enhances my jump even further, and eventually after that, I was able to buy the Jungle Pylon back at the Jungle House. Back at base, I organized my plant farm with planter boxes from the Dryad. I was now able to start making potions on my own. Being so close to the full set of Shadow Armor, I faced Ai Cthulhu real quick and defeated him with ease. I completed the Shadow Armor set and prepared for further encounters. With the day's tasks accomplished, I commenced construction on a new cavern house, making more space for the NPCs to come along. After all the annoying building and killing of the Eater of Worlds, we got our third relic. On day 17, I focused on building my cavern house, spicing it up a lot, making it look a lot more realistic with the worn down type of feel. And of course I had to add the best gun in all of Terraria, the flare gun. Winston Churchill once said, We sleep soundly in our beds because rough men stand ready in the night to visit violence on those who would do us harm. I don't know why he has a country accent. Anyways, after completing some tasks at home, I headed out for an angler quest, getting the fish in an instant, and then making my way over to the jungle in search of the boomstick. To my delight, I found it finally, after a while, which would definitely add a powerful new weapon to my arsenal. We set out on day 18 and we quickly go to complete an angler quest on the surface. Right after, we then focus our efforts on fishing for armored cavefish in the underground to eventually be able to make endurance potions, reducing a ton of total damage that we take. Next, with a swig of a gravitation potion, we go into the skies, discovering a horseshoe and a red balloon among the two sky islands, which are able to have me take zero fall damage and increase my jump height. Returning back to the ground, we make our way over to Skeletron to construct an arena. As night falls, Skeletron is summoned with the help of my new boomstick and bow, we are able to swiftly defeat Skeletron on the first try. Nearing the end of day 18, we go and loot the dungeon to find a nice cobalt shield. As day 19 begins, the unexpected arrival of a goblin army interrupts my exploring inside of the dungeon. With this in mind, I go to dispatch them, and with my new gear, I was able to do it pretty easily. After the goblin army, with some of my newly achieved bones from the dungeon, I was able to craft a portion of the necro armor, which is the best ranged armor pre-hard mode. 
Soon after, I welcome the clothier to my settlement, which is just the old man from the dungeon with some dapper clothes on. Continuing my journey, I complete an angler quest in the desert before returning to the dungeon to get the rest of my bones I needed to finish my necro armor. With my amazing luck, soon after, I encounter the goblin tinkerer, buying the rocket boots and a tinkerer workshop from him to have a massive upgrade to my accessories. Back at home, I was able to combine my accessories and was able to have more open slots for future equipment or accessories. With the necro armor complete and visiting the snow house, I was able to acquire a snow pylon, which just helps with movement and getting around the world. Before the sunrise came, I went to go and find some meteorite for some meteor bullets which bounce and have increased damage. And with this completion of the boss, we got our fourth relic. As day 20 arrived, my quest for meteorite still continues, but sadly, I couldn't find it. Don't worry, we eventually find it. As I explore the depths of the caverns, my angler quest happens to be there, so yet again we do another quest getting even more rewards. After I went to the dryad to gather more planter boxes for my plant farm, increasing the size and the amount of plants I can hold, I diligently mine a elevator and along the way I pass by the cavern house buying the cavern pylon real quick for some easy teleportation. Continuing my elevator, I eventually get to hell and with a shadow key I got from the dungeon I was able to loot shadow chests in hell to hopefully get some good range weapons but no luck yet. Soon after I crafted an obsidian skin potion to get ready and jump in the lava to go mine some hellstone to eventually make the molten fury as well as an upgrade for my tools for hard mode eventually. On day 21, my focus remains on mining hellstone and obsidian to craft essential tools and weapons that I would need. Once I got enough resources and with my new hellforge, I forged a hellstone pickaxe and a ham axe, alongside a molten fury bow. While back at my house, I combined some accessories into the wreck and GPS to eventually get the PDA, a part I would need for the shell phone in the future. With some tedious things out the way, I made my way over to complete an angler quest, I collected the rewards from it, and while back at the house, I had the obsidian in my inventory, so I crafted an obsidian skull, combining it with the cobalt shield for the obsidian shield, giving me extra defense, immunity to knockback, and resistance to fire blocks. After looking for a while, I found the meteorite and was able to mine it. I acquired the mini shark and soon after crafted the star cannon, a powerful weapon that shoots falling stars as ammo. With my massive supply of meteorite, I also stocked up with meteor bullets. Returning back to hell, I uncovered the hellwing bow from the shadow chest, further increasing my arsenal. On day 22, we faced the impending goblin army. Overall, not too bad, relatively easy, especially with the help of meteor bullets. But going to complete the angler's quest next in the caverns, we got the fish and we were on our way to the next objective. Once at the jungle, we hunted hornets for the Bezor, giving immunity to poison, which, in my opinion, is mandatory for the Queen Bee fight. Found the skeleton merchant along the way and bought the artisan loaf he was selling, which increased my crafting station range. Once prepared, made my way over to the Queen Bee starting the fight. The fight was intense at moments, but with the help of my Beezor, I was hardly taking any damage. In the end, we do end up killing Queen Bee, and it brings us to the end of day 22. With this boss done, we get our fifth relic. With day 23, we continued our battles against the Queen Bee, defeating her twice, receiving even more loot. During our third fight, the Witch Doctor arrived unexpectedly, which would be nice for the future. Though we acquired powerful weapons like the bee's knees and bee grenades, we opted not to use them just because I wanted to try something different as a ranger. Placing the queen bee relic as a trophy, we then turned to complete the angler's quest in the desert. Once done with this quest, we obtained the fish hook. Venturing into the icy terrain, we hunted for flinks trying to get the flinks fur for the upcoming fight with deer clops. With the necessary components gathered, we made the summon for deer clops, made a little arena, and we were ready to fight deer clops. He was not hard at all, especially with how hard I have prepared, and took him down fairly easy on our first try. Finally, we turned to collect fallen stars, wrapping up a busy and successful day. Deer clops is now gone, so we got our sixth relic. On day 24, we tackled the angler's quest in the jungle, getting us some quick loot. Shortly after that, we assembled constructing a hell bridge in the fiery depths below to eventually fight the wall of flesh. After some time waiting down there, we were able to find a voodoo demon getting the guide voodoo doll for the wall of flesh. With all this out the way, it took most of the day to make the hell bridge and finding these voodoo demons, bringing us to the end of day 24 already. 
Day 25, we bravely face the Wall of Flesh. This would be the final boss of pre-hard mode, as well as the hardest boss of pre-hard mode. As the fight was going, we had our extremely close moments nearing us to death, but with our resilience, we were able to push through, get to the end of our bridge, and defeat the Wall of Flesh, cutting it pretty close, enabling hard mode for our world as well. Our next task at hand was completing an angler quest at the Sky Lakes, and after that, since we are now in hard mode, we ventured to break some altars, uncovering valuable ores like Cobalt, Mithril, and Adamantite. Going on our expedition, we were able to mine these resources and were able to craft essential tools like the Mithril Anvil and Adamantite Forge. Along the way, we encountered the wizard, purchasing a crystal ball from him to aid our future goals. Continuing our mining efforts, we retrieved even more Adamantite. With the crystal ball from the wizard, it allowed us to create items like the endless quiver, and with our new anvil, we began crafting a set of adamantite armor to boost my defense by a lot and receiving a huge range damage buff. As well as making the adamantite repeater for a better ranged weapon. With Walla Flush dead and now in hard mode, it gave us our seventh relic. As day 26 came, we completed an anger quest in the caverns and received an amazing reward, the fin wings, meaning we won't have to go and make wings, which was pretty helpful. Afterward, we continue mining for more adamantite, discovering a strange plant along the way. Despite the die trader giving me absolute dog sh we continue with our mining efforts. Returning to the surface, we crafted a full set of adamantite armor, finally getting the bonuses we deserve. We then bought a shotgun and ammo reservation station from the arms dealer before crafting an endless musket pouch at home so we never run out of ammo. Next, we focused on farming some dark shards for a powerful weapon called the Onyx Blaster, which we successfully obtained the dark shards fairly quickly, and then I began hunting for Souls of Night to further enhance our arsenal as well as to make boss summons in the near future. On day 27, our hunt for Souls of Night continued. But eventually I had enough and wanted to tackle an angler quest in the jungle biome, earning the bottomless water bucket as a reward. We began preparing a large area for farming souls at night efficiently, so I'd be able to make the stuff I wanted. Despite facing challenges and setbacks from all the corruption mobs, we eventually crafted the powerful onyx blaster after a bunch of attempts. Additionally, we ventured into the hallowed biome to mine for crystals for a better type of ammo. Day 28, we focused on crafting crystal bullets for enhanced firepower, while making my way over to complete, yes, you guessed it, another angler quest, in honey this time, after we managed to obtain a honey absorbent sponge as a result. Wanting a metal detector for the PDA, we embarked on a search for the nymph, and sadly this took all day and could not find it for the life of me. I gave up and thankfully I captured a golden bird along the way to make myself a little bit happier. Despite our efforts, we continued to explore the mines in search of the nymph, encountering unexpected discoveries like a particularly dirty block, which was absolutely insane. There are only six of these on my world. It was an absolute crazy find that I just happened to have gotten it. Among our journey, we stumbled upon a mimic giving us the star cloak, as well as we found the marrow, which is a very strong bow. Day 29, our quest for the elusive nymph continued as we explored the underground caverns. Despite our efforts, we still hadn't found her. Taking a break from our search, we surfaced briefly to craft a gold bird cage so I could look at my bird in awe forever. As well as stumbled upon Abigail's flower, a rare discovery for summoners. Returning to the depths, we found the magic quiver to bolster our arrow and bow damage. Once done exploring the mines, we completed another angler quest in the snow biome, and our hunt for the nymph still continued sadly. Although we encountered and defeated another mimic, we faced another setback and died. However, our spirits were lifted when we stumbled upon a gold bunny back in the caverns, which at this point might as well start a golden animal collection. Despite everything, we remained determined to find the nymph in our adventure. Day 30 was pretty boring. We started by fishing up the quest fish and got the rewards. At this point, I was very annoyed and wanted to just find the nymph. I continued my search all day and it was very frustrating. Eventually, near the end of the day, I found a mimic and killed it to get the dual hook, bringing our day 30 to an end. Day 31, still hunting for the nymph when a sudden pirate invasion disrupts the morning peace. I decided to ignore the pirate army for now, but I know I would have to fight it later. After a bit of searching, I stumbled upon a lost girl, but lose sight of her because I didn't drink a hunter potion allowing me to see enemies' locations, which was very sad. 
back at the surface engaged in battle it feels like an eternity before the pirates are defeated along with many deaths to go along with it and with the death of the pirate army we were able to get our eighth relic on day 32 i tackled various tasks on the surface once done completing an angler quest i fixed a pirate hole and made my way over to the ocean to gather shark fins for hunter potions as the pirate NPC arrived, I geared up by reforging accessories before heading to the hallowed biome to farm pixie dust and unicorn horns. Luck was on my side as the first unicorn I encountered dropped a blessed apple, which is an extremely fast unicorn mount able to help me travel. I continued to farm even after that, getting more resources. On day 33, I went to go complete an angler quest on the surface, and for my reward, I got the golden fishing rod. It is the best fishing rod you can get, and my fishing journeys will now be a lot quicker. Excited by this success, I crafted a batch of holy arrows from pixies and unicorns to enhance my damage. I ventured out to farm for additional holy arrows, gearing up for more future challenges. However, my plans were interrupted when the air grew colder at night, signaling the arrival of danger. Later that night, I faced and defeated Skeletron Prime in battle. It was definitely a long one, but thankfully I've been keeping up and was able to get the loot. With the spoils from the fight, I crafted the powerful Hallowed Repeater. Despite the interruptions, I continued on with establishing a hard mode farm to quickly gather a bunch of loot that was needed in the future. With the surprising arrival of Skeletron Prime, we were able to defeat him and get our ninth relic. With day 34 here, my efforts to establish a farm were met with a few hiccups, including a frustrating death at the hands of an angler fish, which is honestly ridiculous. Nonetheless, I switched gears and completed an angler quest on the surface tundra before turning to my farming project. The arrival of the steampunker added a welcome boost to my progress. Among my many tasks, I stumbled upon the lost girl unexpectedly, finally getting the metal detector, bringing day 34 to an end. Now, a little secret is this farm is a part of our fourth hidden challenge that we're supposed to get, so uh, stay tuned for that. And on day 35, it was overall pretty boring, and for the start of it, I was just making my farm, until I needed to complete an angler quest in the corruption biome and receiving my rewards. I obtained the goblin tech and crafted a fish finder, progressing further, I finally had all the pieces to assemble the PDA and eventually make the cell phone, marking significant milestones in my journey. However, my commitment to the farm remained constant, driving me forward despite these achievements. And yes, the, the farm was taking up the rest of the day. On day 36, after completing an angler quest and obtaining the super absorbent sponge, as well as getting the frog leg, I resumed work on my farm. This farm took all day and a lot of manual labor, but by the end, the farm was finally finished. I then thought it was a good idea if I settled in, patiently awaiting for the nice rewards it would grant me. Coming to the end of uh, day 36 already. On day 37, I remained at my farm, patiently waiting for the rewards it promised. In between, I completed an anger quest on the surface tundra, and crafted a key of light to battle a hallowed mimic, hoping to obtain the Daylist Stormbell, a very strong rage weapon. Sadly, on both attempts, I obtained the Vile Shard both times. Returning back to the farm, I continued to gather loot and think over the political and economical consequences humans can have on labor and businesses. <clears throat> Later, I purchased a contaminator and green solution to cleanse the area around the farm, making sure it works 100%. Content with my progress, I sat back and enjoyed just getting a bunch of loot. My hard work paid off. Day 38 was also pretty uneventful. I remained at my farm, waiting patiently for any drops. Unexpectedly, while tending to the farm, I obtained a hallowed key from mobs. Sadly, this has no use to me because I am a ranger, not a mage. Excited by this find though, I continued my watch until just before nightfall when I decided to complete an angler quest at the Sky Lakes. Before heading out, I upgraded my fishing accessories, so my total fishing power would be a lot better. As night approached, my efforts paid off when I finally acquired the Dayless Stormbow, a powerful weapon from a hallowed mimic. Near the end, I started collecting a bunch of sand so I'd be able to make glass if needed for housing or any other type of task. On day 39, I gathered sand and built an ocean house for NPCs. I was pretty proud of this house, and in time I would eventually get the ocean pylon for easy transportation. Next on the agenda, I completed an angler quest, earning another bottomless water bucket. 
Later when night started falling, I faced the twins in battle. It was particularly not too hard, but near the end for Retinazer, I had to use a bit of unintended strategy to secure a victory, aka cheesing him. With materials gathered, I made progress towards crafting the Ink Shield, a very powerful shield that gives me immunity to all debuffs and extra defense. Rounding off the day and feeling a lot more accomplished. With the twins gone, we were able to get our 10th relic. Day 40, I set out on a journey to gather more materials for the Ink Shield, facing dangers along the way. While exploring, I established a farm area in the dungeon, hoping to find the elusive Nazar. After some farming, I teleported home to prepare for a battle against the Destroyer. With the help of the Daedalus Stormbow, I surprisingly defeated it on my first try, not breaking a sweat too bad. With newfound confidence, I crafted a minecart upgrade kit and the pickaxe axe, enabling us to be able to mine Chlorophyte. Strengthened by my success, I forged a full set of hallowed armor, increasing my range damage and invincibility with the set bonus. Continuing my adventures, I completed an angler quest in the corruption biome before making my way to the ocean ready for more challenges ahead. Now with all the mechanical bosses gone, we get our 11th relic from the destroyer. Day 41, I focused on cleansing the ocean to the left, aiming to farm sharks for their fins. After a long period of time, I finally had enough shark fins. Once done, I went back home and crafted the powerful Mega Shark. Right after that, I went to do an ang request at the jungle surface, getting some quick rewards. I then made Curse Bullets as an upgrade to the Crystal Bullets. As night fell, I summoned Queen Slime, and the fight was not hard at all, and I successfully defeated her on my first try. The victory brought joy, and with this money, I bought new companions, a dog, a cat, and a bunny, to my town, adding to the bustling life in my village. Queen Slime's now gone, so we got our 12th relic. Day 42, I kicked it off by completing an angler quest on the surface forest biome, scoring the hotline fishing rod as my reward, letting me fish in lava. I had a new task in mind that sounded fun, I wanted to clear the ocean to the right to eventually, in time, fill it all up with shimmer instead of water. D don't ask me why, it just feels right. I continued soaking it up throughout the day. By midnight, the ocean was completely drained, marking a significant achievement for myself. With that task done, I began construction on a new house for the Truffle NPC, laying the foundations for their future home in the Skylands, eventually being able to get Shroomite from him. On day 43, I continued and completed the Truffle's house in the Sky Islands before heading underground for an angler quest in the Hallowed Biome. While fishing, I seized the chance to gather crates, netting valuable catches like prismite and armored cavefish. Among my haul were rare finds like the balloon pufferfish and the zephyrfish, which is a super rare pet. With my fishing expedition over, I ventured into the jungle to mine chlorophyte and hunt for life fruits, gearing up for future challenges coming to the end of day 43 already. Day 44, we meet an unfortunate end, but quickly get back on track. I switch gears to an angler quest in the jungle, stumbling upon a mystical frog that sadly doesn't survive, and I don't get the slime pet. Unbothered, I return to mining, finding dynamite to prep for a jungle expedition to build a plantar arena. Before heading out, I craft chlorophyte arrows and equip the chlorophyte shopo. With the new gear ready, I head back to the jungle to start the plantera arena construction. With day 45 here, I'm still working on our jungle arena, but I decided it's time to take on Plantera. After a tense battle and a lot of close calls, we emerge victorious, though we didn't find anything special in the treasure bag. We head to the truffle to buy an auto hammer and a painting, then gather mushrooms to cap part of the shroomite armor. While running an angler quest on the surface real quick, after we chose to make the bullet version of the shroomite armor to get extra gun damage. We also fix up our uh, desert house which got corrupted and spruce up our mushroom house to make it a better biome. Now we're off to fish in lava in the underworld for a demon conch, a part of the eventual shell phone. Plantera gone gives us our 13th relic. Day 46 we continue to be in hell to fish for the demon conch which we snack effortlessly in the afternoon. I, I was honestly surprised because I wasn't sure how rare it was going to be. Then I add some decorations to our ocean house, making it look a bit better, before rushing to the desert to hunt for the magic conch. Eventually in the underground desert, I end up finding it just before nightfall. Excitedly, we gather the materials oh, and yeah, make the shell phone. One of our four tasks are completed. With that success, we venture back to the jungle to gather more chlorophyte and life fruits to boost our strength and gear even more. Day 47, I continue mining for chlorophyte and life fruits to increase my armor and health. 
With a surplus of chlorophyte, I craft plenty of chlorophyte bullets. While completing an angler quest in a honey biome, I look out with another honey absorbent sponge. It's pretty random, but I guess I'll take it. Eager for the new post Plantera dungeon loot, I head there but face repeated deaths. Despite the setbacks, I managed to obtain a vial of venom for venom bullets from the rich doctor and even snag a sniper rifle. Despite the challenges, I persevere acquiring valuable items like the black belt and a bone feather in my dungeon exploration. Day 48, I spend more time in the dungeon finding valuable items like the tabby, nazar, and bandit. I also make progress on the ink charm crafting two of its parts. While attempting to get Medusa's mirror in the jungle, I unfortunately meet my end. Nevertheless, I bounce back and create the Master Ninja Gear for improved combat abilities. Additionally, I set up a small house in the Hallowed Biome for Hallowed Solution and begin planning a huge project in the future, the Hallowed Castle. Days 49 to 53 was all relatively the same. Throughout each day, I would be working on this huge Hallowed Castle project with the occasional angler quest as well as an expedition for more blocks for the build. Overall, not too exciting just working on the huge project. Near the beginning of day 53, we finally finished the Hallowed Castle and might I say, it looks so good. I was really proud of this one. I finished up day 53 by waiting till night to kill the twins for more hallowed bars. Easily I took care of them and made my way over to the jungle to look for more life roots. This ended up taking the rest of uh, day 53. Day 54 I completed my collection of life roots, maximizing my health to a total of 500. Afterwards I located the shimmer near the ocean to the right and crafted the vital crystal. As night fell I had gathered a ton of ectoplasm and other resources and made the naughty present. I bravely summoned the Frost Moon event in search of the Chain Gun, a very powerful ranged weapon. Despite my efforts when it was over, I only managed to acquire the Santa Relic and Elf Mantor, coming to the end of day 54. With this relic, we now have 14. Day 55, I geared up to face Plantera for the Venus Magnum and defeated her easily, but came back empty handed. After completing an angler quest, I crafted another naughty present for the Frostman event later that night. While mining for Chlorophyte, I looked out and found a cross necklace from a Mimic, even though I, I don't really ever use it in this playthrough. Excited, I crafted the specialist Shroomite helmet and Shroomite digging claw with all the Chlorophyte and mushrooms I had. As I battled through the Frostmoon event, frustration crew as I did not get anything. No! Day 56, I was so excited to find Christmas wings and the Everscream relic during my time against the Frostmoon. I then went to complete an angler quest on the surface. With that done, I focused on preparing for battles ahead. I crafted plenty of king slimes to gather ammo for my elf melter, but realized it was inefficient and instead set up a slime statue farm to ensure a steady supply of gel. With everything set, I crafted and I eagerly started the pumpkin moon event, ready for some nice weapons and drops that I uh, wanted. With the morning wood and pumpkin gone, I got my 15th and 16th relic. Day 57 here, I got the candy corn rifle and stank launcher from the pumpkin moon last night and then stocked up on ammo from the arms dealer. After completing an angler quest, I headed to the temple to fight Gollum, but died. I'll try again later. What the fuck? Meanwhile, I started the Frostman event to keep the action going and hopefully get the chain gun in time. And we got the Everscream relic, our 17th one. Day 58, I finally obtained the chain gun, a prized possession that is way better than the Mega Shark. And powered by this new weapon, I faced Gollum once more. It went completely different this time, emerging victorious and obtaining the Stinger and Pixaw on my first try. After relocating the Gollum altar to my main arena, I defeated Gollum again on the surface and crafted beetle wings with the items I got for enhanced mobility. However, despite my efforts, I couldn't find the mirror from Medusa, the final piece needed for my ink charm during the rest of the day, and this took all day. With Gollum gone, we have our 18th relic. Day 59, my relentless hunt for the Medusa Mirror dragged on for a while, until late afternoon I finally got my hands in it after at least 30 Medusas. With the Mirror secured, I quickly crafted the Reflective Shades, then forged the Ink Charm and made that into the Ink Shield. Next I headed to Shimmer to obtain the Ranger Emblem and Aegeus Fruit, increasing my damage and increasing my defense. 
After everything was done, I decided it was finally time to get our secret task done with. I went and made the amphibian boots, which can give auto jump, and went down to our farm to get the Rod of Discord. With this item, we will eventually be able to teleport anywhere we want, and after Moonlord, we can teleport unlimited amounts of times without taking any damage. Day 60 to 67. This was a long process. Now, if you didn't know, the Rod of Discord is extremely rare. If you've ever played Pokemon, it's like you're shiny hunting, but in my opinion, shiny hunting is way worse depending on which game you're playing. Anyways, now, in a normal classic world, the Rod of Discord has a 0.2% chance to drop. Thankfully, I'm in master mode, so the chances get increased to 0.25%. Same with extra mode. Very sad news is that the chances don't increase with each kill. For my world, each kill of a Chaos Elemental gives a 1 in 400 chance to drop the Rod of Discord, as a classic world will have a 1 in 500 chance with every kill. So my chances are basically doomed. But back to the game now. I was extremely bored of doing nothing, but determined to get this masterpiece of an item each day, waiting, counting the time, stacking banners, making sure that every Chaos Elemental is killed to hope that the Rod of Discord is dropped. One day at the beginning of nighttime, I was starting to lose a ton of hope until I randomly got it and was so happy. It was an achievement for myself, and I couldn't believe it. I actually got it. I was honestly scared it was going to take 20 days to maybe get it and make this playthrough run long, but I'm glad I just got it fairly quickly. I finished up the rest of day 67 by receiving the mushroom pylon having teleport access, then making my way over to do an angler quest at the surface. Soon after, I reforged my accessories to menacing for the most damage possible, because with this farm, I don't want to talk about how many souls of light I have, as well as how much platinum coins I have getting to the end of this little journey we had. Day 68 was pretty boring. I dedicated the entire day to constructing a formidable arena for battling Duke Fishron. With every detail carefully planned, the arena took shape, ensuring optimal conditions for the upcoming fight. Among my preparations, I took a break to complete an angry quest on the surface. As night fell, I braced myself for the Frostman event, ready to test my strength against its formidable foes, trying to get certain relics. Day 69, my luck ran dry during the Frostman event, receiving no relics or valuable loot. Still focused, I gathered a bunch of truffle worms in the mushroom biome and was on the way to challenge Duke Fishron. Luckily, I faced Duke Fishron too many times to lose, and with his attack pattern memorized and good gear, I killed him on our first try. Very sad I didn't get anything that would help me out, but it's whatever. Next, I started to go against a Martian Evasion with ease, acquiring a new powerful weapon and the Martian Relic as a trophy of my victory, coming to the end of Day 69. After the Martian Invasion, I got the 19th and 20th Relic. Day 70, I journeyed to the jungle to mine Chlorophyte, but unfortunately died to some bees. After restocking on Chlorophyte bullets and hunting for more Truffle Worms, I faced Duke Fish on again. With my enhanced gear and weapons, he was quite easy, and sadly, no wings were dropped after defeating him. Later that night, though, I summoned the Empress of Light, and although we had a couple close calls, we were able to defeat the Empress of Light, obtaining the Soaring Insignia, giving infinite flight and her relic. Returning to Duke Fishron, I battled him, and I finally got Fishron wings and the Tsunami weapon after successive battles, coming to the end of Day 70. Empress of Light is now gone, we get our 21st relic. Day 71, I revisited the jungle to gather more Chlorophyte for more of the Shroomite armor. After crafting the Shroomite headgear for bows and reforging my gear, I tested out the Tsunami against Duke Fishron, finding it to be extremely powerful and very helpful on my expedition. Needing stronger arrows, I go and craft some quick Venom arrows, as well as I completed an anger quest in the desert before taking on the Frostmoon event at night. And the Frostmoon event was just same old, same old Frostmoon. Finally killed Ice Queen and got our 22nd relic. Day 72, I focused on decorating my cabin in the snow biome by adding a couple pieces of decor, nothing too crazy. Then decided to make a special area for displaying all the relics I have collected, as well as future ones. Experimenting with various types of bricks, I aim to create an aesthetically pleasing relic area. Late at night, I headed out to my meteorite for additional bricks to enhance the area's design, coming to the end of day 72. Day 73, I finished building the relic area, making it have all the proper bricks and certain look I wanted. This took a fat chunk out of my day. While exploring, I discovered a rare gold squirrel, a pleasant surprise. 
Later, I took on the Frost Moon event at night, and at last, I obtained the Snowman Cannon, a weapon I had been hoping for from the Ice Queen. That is an insane explosive type of weapon. Day 74, I collected a considerable amount of money and used it to reforge my items at the Goblin Tinker, which he's not cheap. Completing an anger quest in the corruption, I then set out to hunt unicorns. Once done farming, I stocked up on holy arrows and bought rockets from the cyborg. When night started to fall, with my new weapon and arrows, I attempted to take on all three mechanical bosses at once, but I ended up dying due to some foolish mistakes and getting a little cocky. Unbothered, I shifted my focus to battling Gollum to maybe get some extra money, but eventually ended up dead and it was just not good. Approaching the end of day 74. Nearing the end of our adventure, day 75, I decided it was time to face the lunatic cultist. The fight was not hard and thanks to our weapons, we obliterated him, as well as obtaining his relic and ancient manipulator. Afterward, I destroyed the vortex pillar, crafting the phantasm and vortex beater with its fragments. Next, I wanted to change my reforges to Lucky to have the most critical chance possible, so with night coming up, I defeated Skeleton Prime and then Golem, hoping to obtain an Eye of Golem which gives 10% more critical strike chance, as well as eventually crafting the Destroyer Emblem for increased damage. Sadly, no Eye of Golem was dropped. Lunatic Cultist now gone, we get our 23rd Relic. Day 76 was just a bunch of grinding. I kept battling Gollum in the hopes of obtaining the Eye of Gollum, but despite multiple attempts, I had no luck. Determined to keep trying, I continued mining Chlorophyte and farming for more Gollum summons, hoping for success in the future. Day 77, despite past failures, I kept battling Gollum. Surprisingly, I got the Eye of Gollum on the first try. Excited, I tried to summon the Wall of Flesh and Hell, but could not find a voodoo demon. Instead, I sacrificed the guy to summon it with a uh, nice house next to lava. Back to Gollum, I got another Eye of Gollum on the first try again, allowing me to make another destroyer emblem. With that, I made the sniper scope, as well as fixing farm up in the underground to get corrupted mimics, eventually making the recon scope. Day 78, thankfully luck was on my side as I swiftly obtained the putrid scent from the first corrupted mimic, allowing me to craft the recon scope, heavily receiving range damage. After some accessory reforging, I went on a hunt for strange plants to create unique dyes. Clearing away the nebula pillar blocking my path, I defeated it and then explored the dye trader's offerings, attaining a Martian dye and reflective silver dye to spruce up my character's appearance. With this done, I fight the old one's army but realize I'm still too weak and not ready yet. Despite a setback in the old one's army on the fourth wave, I regrouped and reforged some more items before tending to my plant farm. Finally, I prepared to tackle the solar pillar, swiftly doing my best to get rid of it. Day 79, I took care of the solar pillar and managed my plant farm once more. Before destroying the last pillar, I decided to start a new project, building a floating island chain structure. After building part of the chain structure island, I tried looking for rainbow slimes in the tundra biome, but sadly, no luck. Day 80 was very simple, continuing only with one task, the floating island project, ensuring that it will be at utmost beauty. I dedicate all my time on this, as well as all my effort. Day 81 was more about the floating island project. I dedicated my time to perfecting its design and gathering materials for construction. Along the way, I intentionally made myself die of fall damage to collect gravestones for decoration, making it a graveyard biome and a spooky area. Day 82 was a big day. I completed my floating island project and it looks amazing. Then I defeated the Stardust Pillar and got ready for the Moon Lord. Now, since I'm an absolute god at this game who over prepares on everything, this boss was nothing to me. With enough distance and use of my weapons, I managed to defeat Moon Lord on my first try. Don't worry, we got more to do. Sadly, I didn't get any of the weapon drops I wanted, but I did upgrade my wings to the Celestial Starboard. After that, making my way over to Shimmer, I got the Endless Shimmer Bucket and the Terraformer, as well as upgraded my Rod of Discord to a Rod of Harmony. Finally, a fun task I get to do, fill the entire ocean with Shimmer, a satisfying end to a productive day. Moon Lord now gone, we get our 24th Relic. Day 83 was all about completing the task of filling the ocean with Shimmer. I worked tirelessly throughout the day and just managed to finish before nightfall. However, my attempt to defeat Moon Lord again ended in failure, as I was honestly just playing it dumb. Disappointed, I decided to rest and wait until the next day to gather myself and take on the lunatic cultist once again. 
Day 84 began with a swift defeat of the Lunatic Cultists, followed by taking down the Stardust and Vortex Pillars. Crafting Luminite Arrows and Bullets, I tackled the Solar and Nebula Pillars, preparing for the Moon Lord's Assault. With Moon Lord here, I emerged victorious, obtaining the Celebration MK2 weapon, which is the best rocket launcher in the game, as well as crafting part of my Vortex armor. The next battle against Moon Lord didn't go as smoothly, and I ended up dying, reaching the end of Day 84. Day 85 was action-packed. I battled the Lunatic Cultist and swiftly took down the remaining Celestial Pillars, Vortex, Nebula, Stardust, and Solar. After gearing up, I faced the Moon Lord and emerged victorious once more, but without the loot I wanted. Still determined, I challenged the Moon Lord again, and this time I was rewarded with the powerful SDMG, the best gun in the game. Crafting some new gear, I organized my storage before facing the Moon Lord once more, fortunately meeting my demise. Ah! Nevertheless, I geared up for the Old Ones Army event, ready for the battle against the Big Dragon. Day 86 was all about the Old Ones Army event, and after a challenging battle, I emerged victorious. Among my spoils were the Betsy Relic, Ogre Relic, and Dark Mage Relic. To add to my collection, I obtained a new Light Pet as well. After organizing my storage and reforging some new items, I set out to craft the Drill Containment Unit. Once I had enough of each bar, following that I mined a ton of Chlorophyte, ending up with a whopping 1047 ore. With that task completed, I headed to the dungeon to gather some more ectoplasm. With Old One's army done, we get our 25th, 26th, and 27th relic. Day 87 was spent in the dungeon, tirelessly searching for ectoplasm. Finally nearing 4pm, I collected enough to craft spectre bars. With that task done, I went hunting for glowing mushrooms to create shroomite bars. After successfully gathering the materials, I faced the Lunatic Cultists again to fight the Celestial Pillars. One by one, I defeated the Pillars and prepared for Moon Lord to get more Luminite. Day 88 started with another failed attempt at the impending Doom event, followed by upgrading my hook to the best hook in the game for better mobility. After a successful battle against the Moon Lord, I finally crafted the Drill Containment Unit. Then I cleaned up corruption in the desert and completed an anger quest in the jungle. Back home, I ensured every NPC had the Shimmer Vanity on by building a house above the Ocean Shimmer and slowly turning every NPC into the cool cosmetic version. Finally, I purified a tortured soul in hell to recruit the Tax Collector and started giving each NPC their unique vanity clothes. On day 89, I had a bit of fun by snagging the Traveling Merchant's hat and tossing it into the Ocean Shimmer. Then I made another attempt at fighting the Moon Lord but ended up falling short. Nonetheless, I got serious and built a shrine to gather all the Moon Lord jobs. Just, just felt right, you know? After some preparation, I faced the Moon Lord again, this time emerging victorious and adding more loot to the shrine. Finally, I made sure all NPCs joined the Shimmer trend by decking them out in Shimmer Vanity, completing a satisfying task. I was missing the Princess NPC, but we don't talk about that. On day 90, I geared up for another Moon Lord battle, but got interrupted by a goblin army. After dealing with them, I faced the Moon Lord, defeated him, and added to the shrine. I repeated this process, adding more loot to the shrine each time. Then I crafted the summoning items for the three mechanical bosses and defeated them all at once. Feeling confident, I took on the Old Ones Army event for an extra challenge to test all my gear out, completing our final task, having the best endgame gear and accessories. On day 91, I wrapped up the Old Ones Army event and then focused on expanding my storage area. Afterwards, I began constructing a large underground secret layer for all my creativity to go to. I took a quick trip to gather Chlorify and Ectoplasm from the dungeon. Along the way, I found a Wisp in a Bottle, a nice addition to my pet collection. With all these Spectre Bars made, I crafted some Spectre Paint tools to add some flair to my builds. Days 92 to 96 was all about progress. I crafted a ton of gray bricks to continue building my secret lair. As I worked on it, the first Blood Moon event actually occurred on day 92. Despite the chaos outside, I remained focused on constructing my secret hideaway. The rest of the days, I was putting my heart and soul into this build, coming up with different ideas for each area, like a pub, a library, or some nice bedrooms. One of my most proud creations by far. On day 97, I was busy with both building and battling. First, I had to fend off a pirate invasion where I lucked out and snagged a lucky coin, an extremely rare drop. After that, I completed my secret lair and took a proud tour of it and showed off all its glory. Then I crafted ammunition and some vanity wings before tackling the Celestial Pillars and the Moon Lord himself. Unfortunately, I didn't fare well against the Moon Lord and ended up dying due to my uh, clumsiness. 
Day 98 was all about battling the Moon Lord over and over again, hoping for the items I needed. Despite several attempts, I didn't get what I wanted, but I did manage to collect the Lunar Portal Staff and the Moon Lord Pet. Despite the setbacks, I remained persistent, continuing to fight the Moon Lord multiple times. I eventually realized that the Celebration Gun is not possible to get from Moon Lord and can be bought from the Party Girl. I feel dumb and I looked at the wrong thing on the wiki. Day 99 was all about battling the Moon Lord repeatedly hoping for specific drops, but you know, I, I realized that you couldn't get it, whatever. Nevertheless, I persisted mining a ton of Chlorophyte in the jungle for future use and we're coming up on our last day. Day 100 started off by mining Chlorophyte in the jungle. I ended up making way too many Chlorophyte bullets, but hey, better safe than sorry, right? Also, took the opportunity to buy all the necessary mechanical items and set up some special equipment. It's a secret for now though, so I won't reveal what it is just yet. It took all day and night of setting up, preparing for our full survival of 100 days of this special thing I had going. Woo! Day 100! Day 100! We did all 100 days. I am wow this is this just took forever and honestly i couldn't have done it without you guys you guys are a huge factor in this and you guys have been giving me so much support lately and i appreciate it a lot if you guys want to see more make sure you let me know and make sure to like and subscribe while you're here i'll uh keep up the content and yeah mm -hmm.